What's up guys? Welcome back to The Charge YouTube. Okay, so you may have heard this upcoming September 13th at 8 a.m. Eastern, we're putting on an event in Ode to the Boston Marathon. We're calling it Boston for All. Coach Lindsay, as you guys know from this video, lives right next to Boston. Susan, also from our charge team, big Boston gal. She does so much for fundraising for the Boston Marathon. Coach Lindsay and Susan today are gonna discuss all things Boston, Honestly, editing this video, I got pumped up a little bit. On September 13th, we have a five hour live stream where you can run the marathon or just run in, hop in to do some miles, learn about the Boston course, and just really be together during this time where we can't all be actually physically together. We're going virtual, baby. Before we hop into their conversation though, please hit the big red button below, subscribe to The Charge YouTube. It will allow us to make more content. We appreciate it. Okay, I'm done talking. Let's hear from Coach Lindsay and Susan. I don't know if you can tell, I got the shirt on. <laughs> yeah, and I have I my know. shirt on. Yes, excellent. Wave four, overqualified. Overqualified. <laughs> so tell me about that for a second, the overqualified concept. Yeah, well, you know that I work with charity programs of the Boston Marathon and a mm -hmm. lot of those runners work mm -hmm. with 44 charity programs of Boston. And um, so wave four is, is the charity wave. And that's where all of those people who have been raising funds and setting those goals to run the marathon, to get to that starting line and have their Boylston Street moment. Um, that's where they start the race in wave four. So we call those people the overqualified because they're balancing family and everything mm -hmm. else that goes into raising funds and being a charity runner, as well as all the training. Amazing. I love it. I love that. That is also where I started in my Boston racing way back in 2012. I was in the, the last wave, number 25,000 and something. I started with a charity. So I, I definitely appreciate that. It's been a while, but um, I, I love that you uh, work in that way and with those folks, with everybody. And now you're speedy. Now you're speedy. You go and you qualified. I'm a little bit faster now. Yeah, definitely. So how many times have you run Boston, Lindsay? Uh, three. I've done, I've done it about every other year on average since 2012. Not right on the nose, but it averages out to that. And that's a mix of starting with the uh, charity. I did um, a charity that was associated with the Red Sox Foundation and uh, Paul Epstein, I'm sure you know, and uh, raised the money and ran in 2012. And then the next one after that, I qualified, but I think it wasn't until 2014. I feel like I've done it all. Missed qualifying. You know, I wasn't fast enough, wasn't fit enough. Injuries, you know, the same old, you know, what a lot of people experience. But I've worked my way now to, uh, you know, I think the first one was like three hours and 30 minutes, painful, like the classic Boston memory. And now I can do sub three. So like definitely faster, but it's all... I don't know, all part of a long journey, I guess. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's really hard to qualify. And obviously getting into the Boston Marathon, it's such a prestigious event, you know, 35,000 people, most of them qualified, but, you know, obviously bibs set aside for a charity field, about mm -hmm. $36 million raised with the Boston Marathon every year. So, you know, not only is it fast, but it has this huge philanthropic component. But let me ask you, what's your favorite uh, Boston Marathon memory? I think it's the, the first Boston Marathon. It's got to be, right? <laughs> I have so many memories that are from training for Boston. I'm happy to, to share one or two of those. Um, but from the actual event, like the actual race, race day, was 2012. And it was absolutely the most painful experience I've ever had. This is a classic story. I'm, I'm like telling everybody else's story here, but it's, it's also mine. I started, um, I think that year, that was the year that Teddy Bruschi ran, one of the years. He did a few of them. I remember being in wave four, uh, in the back, and just, just waves and waves of people. Just It felt like miles of people ahead of us, and we're shoulder to shoulder. That was back in the time when everybody was you know, still safe to be close to each other. It was pretty hot that day. It was like the 80-degree day, whatever, 2012. The heat year. <laughs> yes, it was pretty hot. And this was my first marathon ever, like not even like having done, I don't, I definitely hadn't run over 22 miles ever. 
and it was just kind of going for it. And of course I was like 22. I was like, I got this, like, I'm good. Like today is going to go fine, which is not the case. And I remember them announcing that Brewski was up there and we were like, Hey, cool. Hey, Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like no chance he could hear us, but, and then we, we just went down the road and down that hill is just so vivid in my mind, like running and like moving as a unit, like there's whatever, 30 to 35,000 people you don't really feel like you're with everyone, but it definitely feels like you're with 10,000 or so folks together, like with your wave and you're moving together, like whether or not you want to be. And so that is like my most vivid memory is like the starting line in that first uh, round of hills. And then of course, long story short, trying to basically crawl my way from Heartbreak Hill to home, which I, I don't even remember specific things I just remember the pain because I was so so under trained and just under prepared for it but uh that whole first day was awesome yeah the whole beginning of the race it's it you know I think that's probably the thing that sets up most people for a difficulty at the end because you know mm -hmm. you have the first seven miles and it's it's really a straight shot downhill you know, when you look at the elevation and how it drops and then it sort of levels off as you get into into Wellesley and, and you sort of like get into that groove and, and then all of a sudden, you know, you come to the turn at the firehouse and, and, and Newton and, and then, you know, you start climbing for four and a half miles and mm -hmm. it's just rolling hills from there until you get to, you know, top of Heartbreak Hill. And, and then it's sort of a, I would say it's a, a fairly good roll down into Boston with a few little a few little hills like at Fenway. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not smart at the beginning of that course and any elite runner will tell you, you know, you can really set yourself up for, for failure. And I remember the one of the first times that I ran Boston, the first time I ran it, I ran it as a bandit, right? Oh, um, wow. So yeah, yeah, yeah. This is before I qualified or anything because I've qualified many times. But I remember getting to the Coolidge Corner area after running through all the hills and it was like a sledgehammer hitting my legs. Yes, and, right. you know, it's a pain that I've never forgotten before. And, and that's probably a good thing because I've run, been running my whole life. I'll never forget how, you know, playing the course and knowing the course is so, so important. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, the following year after that, I went and I ran a, here's my certificate right here. Yeah. When I was, different last name, but uh, 316, 49. And uh, this was in... 1989. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that's my Boston PR. So I'm I'm kind of I'm still proud of that. I still hold on. That's to great. This. You know, I learned. I mean, that's that's the beauty of the marathon is that you know you learn um, so much about yourself and your body uh, yes. through not only your training but all the races that we do. And uh, Boston is a tough race. I I still think Boston is probably the toughest marathon for most people because it is such a big stage, right? Mm -hmm. And there's so much pressure. Like the world is watching the yes. Boston Marathon, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, totally. I agree with that. And they, they, I think they even did a campaign one year, the world is watching um, with that. It, so very true. So you are even running now and running on the course, right? Yeah. So I continue to run. We're all training for the virtual Boston Marathon my runners. So there's a group of us, we socially distance um, and we go out and run the course every single weekend. And during regular marathon season, I mean, living in this area of Boston, I'm able to go out every Saturday and do my long runs. And it's great because the community of Boston runners is out there always supporting each other. We have aid stations and everything. And uh, we go out there every single weekend and we train and we do our long runs together. And uh, just a nice way to get on the course, know the course. There's nothing like knowing a course, right? Totally, it definitely totally. gives you that edge and, yes. uh, and just be a great community of runners. Nice. I lived in the city there too and had the, the massive advantage of being able to go run on the carriage road there for miles and miles and all the key spots. I wanted to ask you, even recently, what are your favorite sections of the course coming you know, in, into the city, into the greater Boston area? Yeah, I mean, I could tell the story of the Boston Marathon because I've been around here so long and I remember just being a little girl and my dad 
was really obsessed with the Boston Marathon. That's how I got into running. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember Bill Rogers running with the white gloves and how the course instead of went down Boylston, it finished on Ring Road. So I go way back with it. But I think my favorite, probably my favorite I have three favorite places in the Boston Marathon. So, of course, okay. the finish line, right? The okay. Boylston Street moment. I don't think yeah. there's any grander stage than Boylston Street. It is the Super Bowl of running. When you make that right on Hereford, left on Boylston, as your street, as your T-shirt says there, yeah, right. um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's such a euphoric feeling. I mean, all of that pain and agony that you may have been experiencing, say, you know, an hour before, it's like an anesthetic. It just right. goes away. In my second favorite part of the course, and, and nobody really talks about this part, but as you're coming out of Kenmore Square, there's mm-hmm. a little bridge called the yes. Tommy Leonard Bridge, right? Yes. And you have to go underneath it before yeah. you come up into totally. and make that right on Hereford left on Boylston Street. Yep. In that tunnel, I feel like that's when I do most of my reflection of all the training that I've done. Because it becomes a little bit quiet under there. You can hear runners, the pitter-patter of their feet. You know you know what's coming as you mm-hmm. exit that tunnel, right? Mm-hmm. And um, it just, it gives me goosebumps when I just think about just the emotion. And people, I can, I can sometimes hear people, the emotion, you know, because obviously I'm with a lot of charity runners and things. People are inspired when they're running. And you can hear some of the emotion in there. And totally. you know, people are either euphoric, some people are crying. And you, you go through that tunnel, you make that right on Hereford, that left on Boylston Street. And that's when you see your family. And of course, it's just an amazing feeling to be able to get those hugs and kisses at the end. And then that coveted, that coveted Boston Marathon medal, right? That, yeah. Where you get that medal put on and you feel that that's such a great sense of achievement. Totally, totally. Yeah. I don't know if I was telling you this or someone else, but I don't keep any of my medals from races. I appreciate them. I keep the bibs from them. Like the logistics is just that they're a little bit lighter, but I keep the Boston Marathon medals. It's the only ones I keep. So I totally wow. feel that. I love that you mentioned that space under that bridge. I know exactly what you're talking about going under, under Mass Ave there. So you mentioned three spots, the finish yeah, line, that so bridge. The, what was yeah, the and, and then obviously the starting line. I mean, mm-hmm. the starting line to me, when you're walking to that starting line and you have all that anticipation and you're preparing and you're getting ready and you're walking down, you know, Hayden Row, because uh, it's quite a ways from this yeah. school all the, the way to, to the starting line and you're walking with your team or your friends or your group that you've been training with. There's so much camaraderie there um, as totally. runners and, and people that are charity runners. When you're standing at that starting line and you look to your left and your right and you, you know you're part of a group of people that have raised that kind of money, mm-hmm. you know, basically between $7,500 and $12,000 is a minimum to wow. get to that starting line. There is such a sense of pride that you have accomplished this. So that's why I go with the term overqualified because I feel like, you know, it's a group that really deserves attention. And just being at that starting line, you feel so privileged to be in this group of people because they are elite in their own class. Right, right. That's that's awesome. I love that. Like, I I totally know what you're you're saying with that long walk from the high school. Like, I've done it a few times and you come out of Athletes Village there. And it does feel like sometimes some years it takes forever. Sometimes it's like too fast and you're not ready. But then, yeah, all the people around you, it's like us, you know, it's like we, we are going to go and do this. And obviously that's one of the reasons that, you know, we're developing this race in Boston for all. Like we want to, you know, help others experience that sort of feeling, that togetherness. Yeah, there's nothing like the running community. I mean, the running community, so much good is done with the within the running community, just from a philanthropic standpoint through athletic fundraising, but Mm -hmm. also just runners are so supportive of each other, aren't they? They're just always cheering each other on. I, Lindsay, am Boston's biggest cheerleader, because you know I was a Patriots cheerleader. So I continue to do my Boston cheerleading through my running, and I cheer everybody on. Even though I'm running, I'm constantly trying to give, you know, support to people. And I think runners just in general are cheering each other on all the time. Totally. Totally. I agree. You're going to be mayor of Boston soon. You got my vote. (laughs) 
Thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, I have a question for you. So Wellesley College, you love running through there or what? Oh, totally, totally, <laughs> totally. I can tell you a story about that. So I, I'm not even sure of the timeline here. This is like I mentioned, I've got a lot more training for Boston memories that like still stand out in my mind. One of them is the one run. Do you remember that? Oh yeah. The one run for Boston that was put together by a number of people actually not in the U S I think a guy by the name of Danny Bent was one of the key players there. And he did a run from the start of the Boston marathon to the finish. But this was at night for whatever reason, I think, just to keep it as a separate thing. And they had run this baton, like a physical object, from at least one part of the country to the other side. And it was finishing here on the race. So there's a lot of logistics there. And I just, again, you know, 21, 22, 23-year-old, not knowing anything, I was just doing my Boston training. And I did it late at night. And I somehow met up with these folks doing this run, the physical run. And it started with about eight or so of us. I met this guy, Danny, doing it at the start line. And they just, they were, had been running like 300 miles across the country. And of course, it coincided with my random training run. We ran from the start line to Wellesley. And the, I remember vividly in my mind when you mentioned Wellesley College there, it's like my strongest vision is being there at night. There's usually lots of like crowd noise because of the Wellesley girls that are giving you all this support when they're signs. Amazing energy. It's like, that's the point in the race when you know like okay this is going to be a thing that's like bigger than myself i'm going to be pushed and pulled along here by the crowd noise energy starts with those really starts at that point i think and you're you're halfway so it all kind of works together during this one run we started to gather this crowd in uh of runners like people just like just like a like like a friendly mob like this peaceful mob running down the street it's pitch black you can't see anything. You know out there, it's, it's like Wellesley's in the woods. It's not like, you know, city streetlights. Couldn't see a thing. And we're passing this baton back and forth, just trying to keep up. And they, we ran all the way into the city. And I finished at Cleveland Circle because I was living there at the time. And they went on to the finish line, the formal finish line. And they finished probably around midnight. So that was like another memory from the training that it's like just so vivid. Like what a, what a special thing. I'm just grateful to be a part of it. Yeah, that's exciting. I mean, I think the cool part is, is for us at Charge, I feel like we're going to be able to bring this, all of this, all of the excitement, maybe mm -hmm. not the 500,000 spectators that go out on race day, on Patriots right. Day, but, you know, a sense of just, um, you know, hearing Boston music, you know, Boston content within our app. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's just such a cool idea that we're going to be able to celebrate Boston for all it's for you within our app and welcome anybody that wants to experience a little bit of what it's like to run the Boston Marathon. Totally, totally. Let's, let's bring it. That's our goal. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, well, thanks Lindsay. And yeah. uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for this. There's nothing like the tradition of Boston. And even though we're not able to be there in person this year, I think being able to do it virtually within charge running is going to be a great experience. It's absolutely the next best thing. I, I agree. So we'll see you on the app. Absolutely.